you ever think about how much we're controlled by something that's not us, but is us? How there's this like subconscious system that's making all these choices all these times in your life. Whether it's uh, moments when you're getting on stage as a public speaker, pressing the button to record a video, or just like casually stumbling into a Spanish wine bar. That's what happened to me when I realized that I wasn't in control anymore. We talk about ego so often as being this like inflated head that someone has a big ego. But the reality is we all have big egos and it's those egos that are controlling so much of our lives without us even knowing what's going on. For example, maybe there is a, uh, a person you wanna call but you don't call them because you're worried of how that might sound or you're worried of you haven't talked to them in a while or you're worried they might think that you're thinking something you're not thinking but if they think it then it means that you thought it and it's like what is going on with that? We tend to all get in this place of letting this ego side of us make decisions. And so what is it? What is the ego? Is it this place of being in this inflated sense of self? Or is it just the creation of this identity that we fight really hard to protect? That's what I think it is. Psychologists define ego as being the uh, created identity of self. It's, it's the version of I or we, it's, or me. In Latin, it is me or I. And so, this sense of self, which is not really our self, is calling all the shots. I realized this a couple of years ago when I went on a trip to Spain, and I was so excited because I was alone in this, this leg of the trip. I was gonna be taking cooking classes in San Sebastian, and my goal was to explore all they had, one Spanish pincho bar at a time. A pincho bar are these uh, bars that have little food that you can grab off the counter, and at the end you somehow you know, pay for everything that you had. And then I hit a wall. It was a Sunday night, it was super busy, and I was walking around and I didn't go into any of them for a really long time. I told myself that I was just like getting the lay of the land, that I was getting some, some footage, some B-roll, but the reality was my ego was telling me that I was gonna look silly that I was gonna look stupid, that I was gonna make a mistake, that I wouldn't know how to order wine in this place or order the right food or that I would do something embarrassing. And when that kicks in, our ego is in control. And think about all the places in your life where that takes over. I see it all the time as a public speaking coach with people who are worried about getting on stages or getting on camera, speaking on a Zoom call because our ego kicks in and wants to protect us. It wants to keep us from looking silly, making a mistake, saying something wrong, losing status. And this isn't about being egotistical or being worried about your status. It's about the fact that all of us have this little sense of self that wants to protect it at all costs. For me, that was not going into these Spanish wine bars because I didn't want to look silly in a place where literally I knew nobody. And on that Sunday night, so many of the other people were tourists as well. But I was alone. I didn't want to look silly. I wanted to look like I knew what I was supposed to be doing, what was going on. And so I wandered around for like an hour before I finally went in. And, uh, and it wasn't a big deal. It was so busy, nobody cared. Like, figure it out, grab food, don't grab food, scream for your wine. It all worked out. By the way, if you ever go to San Sebastian, you're like, I don't want to look silly. Just walk in and start eating things. Someone will figure out what to tell you, and nobody really cares. So this unconscious ego, this unconscious sense of self is at bat so often for us. We're not even aware of the decisions it's making. It's telling us when we walk into the Starbucks how to say our name in a certain way. It tells us when to tug on our shirt because we're feeling uncomfortable. It stops us from getting on stages, turning on screens, reaching out to family and friends because it wants to protect us. And sometimes it's protecting us from nothing. Sometimes it's protecting us from a real risk that, yeah, maybe, I don't know, a bunch of lions and tigers and bears will storm the stage you're speaking on and attack you in the midst of a great moment during your TEDx talk. It's unlikely, but I mean, it could happen. And so our ego, our sense of self, this weird little inner child is trying to protect us all the time. And because we're unaware of it, it is dictating our life. It is making decisions for us, calling the shots, and stopping us from enjoying so many great things, like a whole bunch of wine I could have enjoyed in that hour in the Spanish wine bar. So what is that for you? What are those places where you think 
I'm stopping myself. Maybe as an entrepreneur, you're not launching a new program because you think my audience uh, won't like this from me. Maybe on social media, you're not posting something because it doesn't fit with your aesthetic. Maybe you're worried about making a reel or a story or shooting a video because you don't wanna look silly. Or maybe you're not taking the stage and giving the big speech because you think, what if they all laugh? What if this isn't what they want? We've become so obsessed with trying to figure out the safe path because our ego is trying to keep us safe that we often don't end up on any path. And our path, our journey here, is to start to get intentional, to start to make the kinds of choices that we know why we're not walking into that Spanish wine bar. We know why we're not getting on stage. And so we get really clear on why we want to, why we should, what's on the other side of it, and what we have to gain from those kinds of experiences. Because that's what it takes to live intentionally, to use your voice, to find your voice, and to change the world.